Did you know AutoCAD has a whole set of tools that are designed to save you time and they're hidden within the ribbon? Let's check them out in today's video where I'm sharing six of my favorite express tools. Express tools in AutoCAD are there to help you clean up drawings, fix annoying issues, and make things easier and faster to get done in AutoCAD. These tools have been added over the years and gradually become their own ribbon panel up on the top of our drawing interface. You can access these by simply going to the Express Tools tab. If you don't have them, you can add them or upgrade to the newest version, which will include them. It's a free set of tools directly built within AutoCAD. In today's video, we're taking a look at six of my favorites. All right, so first up is the burst command. Uh, and I've talked about this one a few times on the channel, but in case you don't know it or you need a refresher, the burst command is basically going to explode a block without wrecking the attributes. It's going to retain any of the values within the attributes of your block. Now, many of us will be using blocks for things like room tags or measurements or uh, if you're in civil, maybe like monitoring or boreholes or manhole tags. There can be a hundred different reasons why you're using tags, section tags, detail tags, anything that you've made a block with an a dynamic attribute. So if you can double click on something and give it a value, if you explode one of these, and there's a lot of reasons why you might need to, it's going to reset the value of the text or object within it. But if you use the burst command, it's going to do the same thing as the explode, but it's going to retain the value of the text. So now you've got a piece of text with the value that was the attribute. This can come in super handy for a lot of different reasons. And this little command is kind of hidden in the express tools, or if you know it, you know that the burst command is the shortcut to do that. In my opinion, this may or may not come up often depending on the type of work you do, but one place where burst and explode can come in handy is when we're exporting or sending off our drawings to a client as a deliverable. Typically, you're not going to want to send them all of your custom blocks. So bursting them and leaving the line work and the proper text within the drawing when you send it away is a better method of setting that file up and not losing any of your proprietary blocks in the process. Next up, or the second Express tool I wanted to share in today's video, is a fun one because of the name. It's called MoCoRo, which stands for Move, Copy, and Rotate. It's going to combine all three into a single time, which can be a huge time saver since most of the time when you're moving objects around, you're going to need to do all three or at least a combination of some of those commands. This simply combines them all into a single command and click. So in our example here, if I delete a few of these chairs, I can simply type in M-O-C-O-R-O -O, or up at the top in the express tools under the modify box, I can choose move, copy and rotate. It's going to select, ask me to select an object. I'm going to choose this chair over here and hit enter. It's going to ask me for my base point. Typically, you're going to use the base point of the block or the center of your object. Now I get the option to choose what I want. So I want to move this object over here. Now I can do what I want with it. I can rotate it so I can rotate it like this and then I can do something else. Maybe I want to copy it again and select over here and again and again and again. So you're gonna get all of these different options and each time you select and end that command, you're gonna get another option. You can even change up the scale of your object in the process so you can really save time by doing all of this within a single command stroke. You can even update your base point or undo your last move. When you're finished, simply hit the exit or hit enter and that ends the command. And now you've kind of done a bunch of different things while saving some keystrokes. Making sure this is one of your go-tos, either memorizing that command or adding this as a custom button to one of your control panels or even better, editing the alias of it, which we're gonna to touch on at the end of the video, how to create custom aliases or quick shortcut commands within AutoCAD to access your most used commands. Next up, we're gonna be taking a look at automating text masks or unmasking objects 
quickly and easily. But before we jump into that, if you haven't already, don't forget to check out my AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course. And even better, right now you can get the complete CAD toolbox package, which includes my AutoCAD Fundamentals course, which takes you through the entire setup of a template from start to finish, including importing layers, blocks, and more, title blocks, layouts, setting all of that up for you to set up your drawing process for success. After you learn how to make templates, it's going to walk you through the entire workflow of creating a drawing, including adding XRefs, text, dimensions, layouts, viewports, and a ton, ton more. When you've finished your drawing, it teaches you how to plot to PDF and print, as well as how to package up and send your drawings properly to a client. All of this is included in the course. And if you get the complete CAD toolbox, you're going to get that course, as well as my AutoCAD Kickstart course, which teaches you AutoCAD from the very beginning if you've never used it before, as well as all of my gold package templates and title blocks included and productivity webinar ebooks checklists and a ton ton more you can get all of this at the link up above and down below in the description all right so moving along as I mentioned I've got a quick way for you to add text masks to text in just a couple clicks now you can see these pieces of text here are all over top of a hatch and when you go to plot these out typically this kind of text is very difficult to read and I'll normally recommend adding text masks to these but in a lot of cases that can be kind of difficult and you're gonna to have to do that one by one or go into the properties or settings of your text objects and add that mask. If you go to the Express Tools ribbon panel up here and simply select the text flyout here, you can text mask in a single click. Selecting all of your objects and hitting enter is going to automatically add text masks to each of those pieces of text and in the same way that you can just click to add text masks you can click to unmask or remove text from all of those as well it's as easy as a couple clicks and this is going to save you time from going into those properties or settings of each piece of text and i tend to flip these on and off depending on the background and the drawing i'm working on because you don't necessarily want the masks on if they don't need to be and in some cases you don't want pieces of text to stand out you kind of want them hidden so this allows you to individually add these quickly with just a few clicks all right, so next up is one called Align Space. You can see it up here under the Layout box. And what this is going to do is allow you to align your layout viewport with something within your drawing. So you can see this line here or rectangle we've got surrounding this area of the plan. It's currently on the def points layer, which means it's not going to plot. You're not gonna see this when you print your drawing. I'll use these boxes to kind of pre-set out where I want my viewports to go. This is especially useful for large projects like uh, civil alignments where you're going to have a ton of different sheets along an alignment, but it can also be useful to show different areas of a floor plan. Now, if you're in a viewport uh, or a layout space over here and you double click in a viewport, now you can simply zoom in and out. But if you want to make sure these all match between all of your drawings, having these boxes in an XREF and calling it something like layout extents, you can have a ton of these boxes overlaying on your drawings. And now when you're in a different drawing, you XREF that in and you simply use that align space command we were talking about. So if you're in layout space, click align space. Now it's going to flip you into the viewport here. You can see it's highlighted. And I simply need to snap or click on the corners of my viewport extent that I want and it's going to flip back to paper space. Now I simply match those corners. So the first one I clicked was the top left. Now I'm going to click the top left in my layout space. The second one I clicked was the bottom right of my model space. Now I want to do that in paper space over here. Now hit enter. It's uh, showing me which viewport this is doing. If you have multiple viewports, simply click inside of the other viewport and hit enter. Now when I double click out, you can see that we've exactly lined up that viewport to that box. Now, again, if you're just having one or two sheets in a drawing package, this might not be the most time saving way of doing it. But if you're having a ton of viewports set up in multiple drawings, referencing in a sheet with a ton of these rectangles, showing you where every 
uh, viewport is, and then using the align space to make sure they're all aligned in the exact same location and spot is a great way to keep things consistent throughout a project and with multiple people working on it because everybody knows to align to those boxes when they create a new viewport. Now, lastly, and one that I hinted at before, this might be the biggest time saver within AutoCAD, and that is customizing your command aliases within the software. Now, on the Express tools here, you can simply click command aliases in the top right, and this is gonna allow you to change any of the commands or add new ones within AutoCAD. Now, you simply find the command you'd like, or you click add, and you're going to get a dialog box where you can search a command. So maybe we want to search Mokoro and we want to give it a new alias. You could do anything you want as long as it's not taken or you can use taken ones and overwrite them. I like to set up a handful of really short ones that I'll know I'll use a lot. And then I just memorize these or keep little notes on the corner of my screen. Now for ones that you'll tend to use or you don't use that often, for me, I don't tend to use circle that often, but I do use copy a lot. So in a lot of cases, I will edit the circle command uh, alias and change the C to mean copy. This will save me a ton of time, and on most of my machines, I've done that. I don't like typing in CO instead of C for copy, since that little lag or second keystroke costs me time, and that adds up over years and years of a project or a career. So editing and customizing your command aliases is a great way to save time within AutoCAD, and I highly recommend you set up at least a few and work on memorizing those. Once you've got them down, it's always easy to add and change a few more. If you find yourself ever accidentally activating commands you don't need, simply remove that alias or replace it with a command that you are trying to do. Many of these are simply the first few letters of a command and it's going to auto complete or auto populate in the command line. Changing those to the quick ones that you like and use daily is a great way to save time. That's all for today's video. I hope you learned a few cool little express tools along the way. And if you've got any requests, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. We're so close to 100,000 and I post videos weekly helping you get faster and more productive in AutoCAD. Cheers and have a good one.